All right, let's look at evolution over time. And so we're going to look at uh, macroevolution uh, and microevolution. So microevolution uh, is a slight change in the allele frequencies in a population over a few generations. And this is caused by the evolutionary processes we already talked about, natural selection, mutations, genetic drift, uh, gene flow, and non-random mating. So here is what we're looking at with microevolution, just going from here to here. All right. Macroevolution, these are large scale products of evolutionary change involving the origins of new groups of organisms. So, origins of new groups of organisms. All right. So, macroevolution is looking at, you know, th these end products here. But how we get to those end products is all through microevolutionary processes. And the only difference between microevolution and macroevolution are the time scales. Microevolution is looking at uh, small evolutionary changes over small periods of time. And macroevolution is looking at uh, large evolutionary changes over long periods of time. All right. So let's look at the rate of evolution. All right. So some organisms uh, evolve very quickly, uh, so, such as bacteria. All right. Uh, some uh, evolve very slowly, uh, such as a lungfish. Uh, lungfish, if we look at um, fossils of these guys from 250 million years ago, they look very similar to what they look like today. So, let's look at uh, these two patterns in which organisms evolve. One is gradualism, and this is, I've already talked about this, is the wide variety of organisms in existence are the result of the accumulation of gradual changes over time. So, small changes over short periods of time result in large changes over long periods of time. There's a different idea called punctuated equilibrium. And this states that speciation occurs in spurts followed by long periods of little change. So we have speciation occurring in spurts, long periods of little change occurring after that. So this is contrast to gradualism. So typically what happens with punctuated equilibrium is the environment changes very quickly and so these uh, organisms have to evolve very quickly those changing environments. So, uh, and then if the environment doesn't change much over time, uh, then you know you aren't going to see much change occurring in those populations. And so, lungfish are pretty much living in the same kind of environments they did 250 million years ago. So there's no reason for them to evolve out of the traits that they have. Okay. All right. So let's look at uh, extinctions. So an extinction is a complete loss of all the individuals uh, in a species population. So just as speciation occurs uh, constantly, so does extinction. In the average lifespan of a species, it is anywhere from one to two million years. So that's typical of what we see. Now, humans, we've been around at most about 150,000 years. So if we're lucky, uh, we'll get to that upper range there. So. Next uh, is background extinctions. And this is the normal rate of extinctions. So here, uh, these rates are lower than what we see with mass extinctions or where these peaks that you see along here. All right, and uh, this can be due to several things. This is due to one species outcompeting another species or one species actually preys another species into existence. Uh, or it could be due to a uh, species uh, slow, uh, being slow to adapt to a changing environment. In fact, you know, most of the species that have lived on this earth have died out. Like 99.9999% of all species have died out. All right, let's look at mass extinctions. So these are periods during, uh, during which a large number of species become extinct over a relatively short period of time. All right, and there have been five mass extinctions. And some people are suggesting there's a sixth, but we'll get to that. So in these cases, uh, usually uh, this is where you have 50% or more of the animal species become extinct. Now, this isn't showing animal species becoming extinct. This is a percentage of families that became extinct, uh, which is a higher classification, right? This is usually due to an extraordinary and sudden environmental change, all right? So here is a Permian extinction. Uh, so this is uh, the great dying, about 90% of life died in that one. All right. Uh, the last major one was the extinction of all the dinosaur species, 
uh, and three quarters of all species on Earth died. That was about 65 million years ago. Now we know what happened there. Uh, we know that a large asteroid hit the Earth. And when it hit the Earth, it produced uh, a lot of particulates into the atmosphere. And what happened after that is those particulates rained down back onto the Earth. Now, if you've ever seen a meteor, uh, so a meteorite, once it's hitting our atmosphere, it burns up, all right? So what happened after this major explosion occurred, you wouldn't want to have been anywhere near this, all right? Uh, this was off the Yucatan Peninsula uh, off of Mexico. But once this occurred and all these small particulates were in the atmosphere, well, they all came back down. And all these little pieces, when they came back down, burned up in our atmosphere as they came back down. And so what happened here is this uh, caused a huge heat wave, uh, uh, a fiery inferno all across the planet. Uh, and that killed uh, organisms instantly. But here's the thing. If you were six inches below the ground, you had enough insulation that you could survive that. And guess where the mammal uh, ancestors were, our mammal ancestors were? Well, a lot of them were living underground at that time period. And that's how they were able to survive this major extinction.